Hey everybody, I just want to let you know that the entries for this year's Sleepwire Pro-Am and Listener Leagues are now available. Coming back for the fifth season, we once again have a great lineup of pros, including Jake Seeley, Matt Harmon, Mitch Renz, Pat Fitzmorris, Marcus Grant, Justin Boone, the Sleeper app, and so much more. We have so many options for you to play with the pros and us this season. A one-time $50 donation to our Patreon page will get you into the Pro-Am, A one-time donation of $30 gets you into a listener league with us, and a one-time $75 donation gets you into both the Pro-Am and a listener league. Visit patreon.com slash sleeperwire to make your donation, and then screenshot your confirmation email and send it to sleeperwire at gmail.com, and we'll make sure to get you on the list. Make sure to include your name and your sleeper username in the email. Once again, That's patreon.com slash sleeperwire and send it to sleeperwire at gmail.com. I challenge you to a duel. It's the only argument I need. I don't want to talk to you no more, you. You got a lot of nerve. Soon you will know what it is like to be defeated. Stop defending him, Sean. All right, let's go. Hey everyone, welcome into the Sleeper Wire Great Debate Show. We are finally back and getting ready for the 2019 fantasy football season. With me today on the first Great Debate of 2019 is none other than and Dirty Jobs Mike. Mike, how's it going? Welcome to the first great debate of the season. Hey, not too bad. I feel like I closed it out with you last year as well. So, hey, why not ring it in the right way? Yeah, that's right. You know, you're just going to be on every one. How's that? That sounds good. I'm good with that. <laughs> oh, so, man, it is June. It's You know what's crazy is that I am in less than a month. I'm going to be at SportsCon in Dallas. That is awesome. Yeah, unfortunately, with everything going on right now, I'm probably going to miss it this year, but that's going to be the only time that happens. I'm going to be probably moving down to Florida here within about three weeks. So, Well, fingers crossed for next year, though, right? There you go. There you go. Yeah. So, guys, uh, like I said, Sleeper Wire is going to be at uh, SportsCon this year. We're collaborating with Eat Sleep Fantasy, and we are the uh, hosting the official fantasy draft event of SportsCon. It's going to be at Top Golf Dallas. Check out draftnightout.com if you want to find out more information there. Show up, win some signed merchandise. We got this Melvin Gordon signed jersey that is amazing. I don't even want to give it away. Yeah. Like that's... this thing is beautiful. Yeah. Draftnightout.com. Go check that out. For those of you listening to the great debate for the first time, what we are doing here is having a debate style argument between two players. We get two minutes to argue for our player, 90 seconds for rebuttals, and then we wrap it up with our final thoughts. So that means there is no winner. There's no loser. We're not trying to quote unquote win the debate. These are unbiased, objective, stats based arguments for and against these guys. We take those gut feelings and throw them out the window so that we can really dig into the numbers here. So if you like what you hear, please go to iTunes or Google Play and drop us a nice review. Uh, leave us a nice rating. That would be great. And today we are kicking off the 2019 season with two running backs, both going yeah maybe into the first round. Some might argue beginning of the second round. We got James Conner versus Joe Mixon. I've got Conner and Mike has Mixon. And Mike, you ready to get going here? Let's get it on. All right. I'm going to kick us off with Conner. So James Conner, man, what a season this guy had last year. In only 13 games, he carried the ball 215 times for 973 yards and 12 touchdowns. That is a 16-game pace of 265 carries, 1,198 yards, and 15 touchdowns on the ground. And like I said, that is just running the ball. Through the air, he had 58 or 55 catches on 71 targets, 497 receiving yards and a receiving touchdown. That was a 16-game pace of 68 catches and 612 yards. Those stats that I just listed right there would have put him at the second most carries, the fourth most rushing yards, the third most touchdowns, the seventh most receptions, and the sixth most receiving yards out of all running backs. He's going to be top seven in basically everything, and you know, top two or three in quite a few of them. 
So James Conner, just an amazing season for just 13 games. Let's talk about this guy's fantasy production last year. Last season, like I said, he missed three games. He still finished as the RB6 in PPR. That's pretty damn amazing. For a 16-game pace, he still would have been the RB5. That's how good James Conner was last season. He was so good that he still finished the RB6, and with his pace would have still been RB5. This guy was amazing for you. This is a weak winning type of running back. He had three games last season with more than 34 points and seven games with more than 19 points, and that's PPR scoring. He also had a four-game stretch where he had 28 or more fantasy points in each game. That is just ridiculous. He had five games over 100 rushing yards. Only four of his games were less than 60, and those games were against the Chiefs, the Ravens, the Jaguars, and the Broncos, four really good defenses. Not to mention, three of those four games, he had fewer than 10 carries due to a game script and some nagging injuries. When he received 19 or more carries, he was amazing. And guess what? Mike Tomlin has a history of sticking with one running back. Mm. All right, Mike, let's hear that rebuttal. It's it's funny because right at the end there, you were bringing up Mike Tomlin. Okay. We got Mike Tomlin over here. This guy's been getting shellacked every single year. He missed the playoffs last year, didn't he? So I think we're going to start seeing a little bit of changes, maybe a little bit of change in the thought process. And that was the consistency of Mike Tomlin's coaching. You've got Connor out there. He's got a threat by the name of Jalen Samuels, just waiting in the shadows Waiting to pounce. He's going to come out. This guy is huge. He's fast. He's very good. And don't forget, they signed Snell, too. And this guy is also very quick. He could very well be the future of the Pittsburgh running back system. So I think what you're going to see this year is Tomlin getting a running back by committee situation going. And I think Connor might actually be almost at the tail end of that committee, maybe by week three, week four. And I think you start seeing his production vary quite a bit so i'm going to try to avoid him in most of my drafts and i'd like to point out that last year there was absolutely nobody higher on this guy than i was i was saying draft connor Le'Veon bell isn't going to play and i was right and i feel like the same thing is going to happen i feel like i know how mike tomlin coaches i feel like he's going to be in under all this pressure to have to do all these things to change that system to try to make them a winning football team again. And now he has to do it without Antonio Brown and without Le'Veon Bell. All right, let's move over to Joe Mixon. Mike, take it away. Okay, so on the opposite end of the spectrum, we've got our man, Joe Mixon. This guy is a beast. He runs with ferocity. He is very fast. He's good inside and outside. And this guy catches the ball. In his rookie year, he only started seven games. Got 626 yards on the ground, four touchdowns, but he had 30 receptions, 287 yards. He only had three fumbles, which is pretty bad, but they worked on it. Last year, he played 13 games. He had 237 rushing attempts for 1,168 yards, eight touchdowns. He had 43 catches, 43 catches. So in a PPR league, mm -mm. but 292 yards and one touchdown and zero fumbles last year. So this guy's just out there being a machine for you. And Cincinnati, that team is really no slouch. They, what the problem is in Cincinnati can't seem to stay healthy. So what they do is, or what they have is A.J. Green. They've got Tyler Boyd. They've got Andy Dalton. I mean, come on. These guys are rockets when they get going. And with all these guys on the field out there, it's going to be a defensive nightmare. And then you have Joe Mixon just sitting right there in the backfield ready to just dominate. And again, 43 catches in a PPR league. That's 43 extra points that this guy is bringing. And he's only getting more and more dominant. He's only getting more and more used in this system. Cincinnati, again, they're coming up. And if they can keep their defense healthy and their offense on the field, they're going to be pretty tough to beat. Although you'll probably still beat the Bengals. They'll still be putting up all those fantasy production points that we all look for. And the guy who's going to be leading that steadway, I guarantee it is going to be Joe Mixon. He's just got to be too involved. The game plan has to fit around him in Cincinnati. All right, so kicking off my rebuttal here, I'm actually pretty surprised that you didn't use Connor's injury last year as an argument against him because I was about, you know, I was going to say, if you're going to use that, his health as a reason against James Connor, we have to use it against Joe Mixon as well. He missed two games last season. He missed two games in 2017. 
I'm not going to bank on that again, though. And listen, Joe Mixon is great. I do love Joe Mixon. I love James Conner. These guys are both great running backs. Mixon finished as the RB10 in PPR last year. You're going to be glad to have him on your team this season. But a big reason that he got so much work last season was the absence of A.J. Green. Green only played nine games. With only Tyler Boyd and John Ross, Andy Dalton didn't have much of a choice but to dump it off to Joe Mixon a lot. And, you know, also the Bengals had the 27th ranked offensive line last season. I just, you know, as I'm going to get to here in just a few minutes when I finish up my final thoughts on James Conner, just Conner has much more working in his favor than Joe Mixon does. All right, we're going to move back into final thoughts, and I'm going to take it back to James Conner here, and I'm going to pick up where I left off with Mike Tomlin. As I was saying, Tomlin's got this history of sticking with one running back and running him into the ground. Now, I'm not saying that James Conner is Le'Veon Bell, but he's going to get work, and everything is in his favor. The opportunity for carries is 100% going to be there for Conner. But not only opportunity, let's talk about the team. Antonio Brown is gone. I know a big knock against Connor is the whole, well, now opposing teams can stack the box, but even if they do, it's not going to matter. And plus, all those Antonio Brown targets being gone can also very easily lead you to the narrative that running backs in Pittsburgh are going to get more work in the passing game. And those screen passes to Connor could be a huge part of his game this season. And, you know, speaking of stack boxes, let's talk about the offensive line. According to Pro Football Focus, the Steelers had the number one graded offensive line last, last season. That's not changing. They have a top five line every season, and Steelers running backs are always amazing. And this year is going to be no different. James Conner has everything in his favor. The talent's there. The opportunity is there. He's running behind a great offensive line. He's still got a good quarterback. They still have a great wide receiver in... Juju Smith-Schuster to stretch the field. Other wide receiver. Yeah, I'm not going to sit here and say that Dante Moncrief and you know, James Washington are great by any means, but there's someone that you have to pay attention to. But with Juju stretching the field and great quarterback in Big Ben, offensive line, talent, opportunity, I don't think there's anything to dislike about James Conner. Okay, so first off, Dante Moncrief is amazing. You... <laughs> he was with the Colts. He, oh my goodness! Of course, you take it to the Colts. But no, I mean, really, the running back in Pittsburgh is going to be a guy to own. There is no arguing there. That is a fantastic line. My argument for why I like whoever is in that position is the same reason why I don't really like Le'Veon Bell this year. Is because he's not running behind that huge semi-opening line. I mean, these guys are just great. So. If it is Connor, that's my question. If it is Connor, is it going to be Samuels? Is it going to be a mix of the three? We just don't know what we're seeing yet. And I think that Samuels is just a better. He's a better talent. He's bigger and he's faster. So I think he can really make an impact. This year, they know they don't have Le'Veon Bell coming into it. On the opposite end, Mixon is just such a beast, such a vital per, uh, vital part of that offense that I just can't. I can't avoid him. I'm trying to get him in almost every single draft because I like drafting late. I'm picking this guy up in the 11th, 12th round. Or not 11th, 12th round, 11th, 12th pick. <laughs> what a steal. Right. Yeah, take Mixon right. in the 11th or 12th round over Connor in the first. I'll give you right. that. <laughs> All right, guys, that is going to wrap it up for this first episode of The Great Debate. Please follow us on Twitter at Sleeperwire Show. Mike is on there at Dirty Jobs 21. I'm on there at prof underscore Chris SW. You can also find us on the Sleeper app at Dirty Jobs and Professor Chris. Mike, thank you so much for joining me this week, man. As always, it's always a pleasure, man. I love the great debates. Same here. Everybody else, thanks for listening. We'll catch you guys next time.